pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So I got a call from Tom, he's detained and he'd like to be excused and Mickey uh, uh, gave us heads up at the last meeting that he wouldn't be here. I have a motion to excuse those two? So move. Second. Who is seconded to excuse Hastings and uh, Holtz? All those in favor of aye? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay, now we're at the uh, meeting agenda, I think. Uh, um, first of all, I'll announce that uh, Amy won't be here. She, she had a family medical issue for one of her children. And uh, let's see. And then, uh, okay. And there's something else. Yeah. I'll, I'll move that we amend the meeting agenda to strike uh, Amy McGuffin, her report, and also uh, to add the consideration uh, under new business item C to consider a general service <coughs> agreement with Time Saver PC, Cleveland, Washington. Is there a second? Second. Move to second it to amend the question. Question? I, uh, I Are we adding something to the agenda? Yeah, he did. Correct. He did. Under uh, C, a general service agreement with uh, Time Savers PC. What's it for? That's what we'll discuss. That's what we'll, that's what we'll it's, discuss. It's for we'll general discussion then before we vote on it. We're not voting on it. We're not voting on it. We're, we're just it. putting on the agenda, agenda, agenda and we can talk about it then if you don't want to. Well, I, I oppose putting stuff on agenda in such a short period of time. We don't have the time to. Sure. To get to it, so uh, I would prefer that we put it off until the next agenda and give us the information we can study on before we vote on anything on this. Okay, well that's it. that's how you feel about it. But uh, yes. if it's moved and seconded, is it been moved and seconded? Yes. Yes. All those in favor with aye. 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 Opposed. Opposed. Okay. And we can discuss it. Okay. Um, okay. So that's with the agenda now. <coughs> I usually don't get, we don't usually get words of compliments. But we did get an email from a person whose name is uh, Sandra Salisbury. And, uh, and uh, this person says, uh, the subject is Tesla superchargers. I want to compliment city staff on the location and operation of the Tesla superchargers in Cleveland. I have charged at many superchargers in Washington, Oregon, and California. I charged Wednesday and Thursday in Cleveland. Yours are the only chargers with additional EV chargers. The stalls are plowed and there was a trash can available. Uh, far different from the, than many other charging locations. The proximity to Gunner's Bistro is a real bonus. My compliments to your planning and public works staff. Uh, Sandy Salisbury, Olympia, Washington. So I thought I okay, that came out of the booth. So, we like Gunner's Bistro know about that too. Uh, yes, yeah. we can we can have send a copy to him. I've uh, I've noticed down there. Yeah. It's, it's surprising how many cars are stopping in there. That's true. Yeah. It's a nice. I, I was kind of shocked that there'd be three or four st stacked up at a time, but they're there. So makes yeah. sense. We're on a freeway. Huh? It makes sense. We're on a freeway. Hey, there you go. You, we, you know. The, 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 the old days, <laughs> we had a lot of service stations, and we lived off gas, pumping gas in this town. A lot of tow yards, service stations, uh, yeah. tremendous amount. <coughs> for sure. Days in the past. Okay, um, that's it for announcements. So we're down to the consent agenda. Uh, move that we have to accept the uh, consent. Agenda. I'll second. Move to second it to accept the consent agenda. Question. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So now we're down to officer's reports and we'll hear from Rob first, our city administrator. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, City Council. Really not a, not a whole lot to report since the last time. Uh, the mayor and I did go to a WCIA full board meeting uh, Friday. 
Um, always interesting and, and uh, fun to go to those. Uh, before that, uh, right before the board meeting, there was a, uh, a training session uh, about uh, homelessness, really, and uh, it was quite interesting stories. And it's 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 I guess it's comforting to you know that big cities, small cities, they all have similar problems. So that was uh, that was a, it was a good little training that opened our eyes on some things. Um, last. Last time, uh, I believe it was uh, Mr. Harper that was uh, asking about the KitCom outage. So I was I went to the KitCom meeting, and uh, it's very technical stuff. But basically, it, it's called the uh, SS7 layer. SS7 layer. It's basically a, a s software that transfers fo uh, phone calls very fast. It's, it's and it's for the most part, it's very solid. It's been running probably, don't quote me on the years, but a lot, a long time, ten years probably, and it's only done this maybe <coughs> twice in those ten years, and and uh, obviously it's fixed now, and that probably won't have that same problem again. So that that was it, it was kind of a not only statewide, but it was actually country, uh, the whole na nationwide in some par parts. So um, somebody pushed the wrong button or something, I think. Uh, um, other than that, uh, we've been, uh, you know, end of the end of the year. There's there's a lot of things we need to. I've been working with the treasurer to try to get some beginning balances uh, squared away. But uh, other than that, uh, just uh, day to day operations going smoothly. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Rob. So now we'll listen to our planner, Lucy. Thank you, Honorable Mayor and Council. Um, so, a couple of recaps. Um, we talked last time about the AWC City Vision magazine that we are going to be featured in, and that photo shoot was today in the rain. And at the time of the photo shoot, there wasn't very much snow on the sidewalk, so that was good. Um, and uh, they're going to we'll probably get a proof of that magazine in the next couple of weeks and I think that the I think it's coming uh, going to print on I wanted to say the third or the fourth of February um, we also last week had a really good uh, meeting with HLA and our city staff and the um, Billings Avenue intersection landowners the four corners there um, to talk about the project that's coming up this year and everyone was um, very pleasant and agreeable and think the project's a great idea and um, there were minimal um, changes to the to the preliminary plan coming out of that meeting but we'll be talking with them some more uh, we also last week had um, a meeting a town hall forum to discuss the <coughs> winter parking with um, at Denny Avenue Marion Drive and um, Mike might talk more about that um, and then we have upcoming this week, later on um, Thursday, I believe, we have a um, what's called a community assistance contact meeting with the Department of Ecology um, for our floodplain ordinance. Um, in 2016, we had a required um, periodic community assistance visit, and, and Rob basically handed that to me halfway done, like right when I walked through the doors, first day of work, and said, Take this for me. And so Did you get it done yet? I, I haven't got it done yet. No, um, I got it done then, but this new person with the floodplain um, program of Department of Ecology um, is going to come and meet with us. I guess the community co assistant contact meeting are the in between the community assistance visits. Um, so they basically will let us know what, maybe what we could work on, what we can look at in our ordinance, if any the rules have changed on a state or federal level. Um, and then when we get to the community assistance visit, um, whenever that happens, we will be already ready for it. And, and it's also, um, they're going to provide me a bit of training as the floodplain manager for the city. Um, a, a little bit more training. I've been to floodplain management training, but this is just um, supplemental to that, so it will be helpful. Um, and then the other thing I've been working on a lot over the last week, week and a half, is the uh, a capital budget 
request to the 2019 legislative session for our downtown project. It's a $4 million um, legislative proviso uh, ask, and we will be, we've been working with um, Judy Warnick's office, Senator Warnick, and her legislative aide are going to um, intake our whole package. We're going to give it to them tomorrow, and then they will, um, it, it is our understanding that Senator Warnick will sign it as a sponsor, send that off to Senator Curtis King, who is the ranking member of the um, Transportation Commission, and then we, on the other side of that, HLA has been working with Senator King's office and aid to set up a meeting. So we will be going to Olympia, meeting with Senator King once he's received that legislative proviso package from Senator Warnick. And hopefully that all also coincides with that AWC magazine we'll be able to bring in as well. So um, a lot of things are coming together for the downtown, so cross your fingers on that. That's it. Any questions? So the intersection she was talking about is where the shell model belongs and the hotel is. And it was a good meeting. They, uh, uh, they were, generally speaking, happy to see it happen. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. If not, we'll go to our public works director, Mike Engelhart. Honorable Mayor, Council Members. Again, I would just like to emphasize winter parking. As Lucy mentioned a little bit earlier, we had a really good round table. I think it went really well. Huh. Got some community insight from the residents up there in Denny and Marion about the parking ordinance and the time that they park out there on the streets or have to park out there on the streets during the winter. Um, along with that, I think it went so well, and I mentioned before that one of the things I want to try that kind of gave me a little taste on how I think it's going to go, which I think is going to go good. I'm really going to start pushing and pursuing the uh, Public Works Open House. And along with that, I have a meeting later on this week with the Career Center Specialist up at the high school. I want to kind of do a little dry run with that, get the high school kids involved, bring them down like to the plant. I've been working with Willie up at the water treatment plant, and we're going to do an open house for them with the kids to start off with. I think, you know, the science class, any of you that have went up to that water treatment plant, it's pretty pretty intense, pretty elaborate chemistry type stuff that happens. So I think it would be great for the kids and for the public to kind of see where their drinking water comes from. So we're going to start with that, escalate from there, see how things go. So we're working on that. Uh, continuing to perform snow and ice removal. We've already called the guys tonight. We'll all be out at 5 in the morning out moving the snow so you can all get to work in the morning. Um, I put in your packets up there, a couple of pictures. The new airport sign is installed. Uh, so far we've gotten some great feedback on that. People really like it. We also installed a sign on the city shop. We've had a few deliveries that have gone astray because they seem to not be able to find the shop because it's never been labeled. So we went ahead and put signs on the shop and so far feedback from that has been pretty good. Uh, and then the other one is you'll notice some shipping containers. We finally got the house, the old house in the yard there, demoed and removed, graded and compacted the yard there, and got some storage containers so we can continue to reorganize the shop down there and get some of our inventory <coughs> under control. Um, I'm working with some of our suppliers. We have some inventory that's been amongst our inventory for several years, and if it's in still good repair, good shape, they're actually going to let us return it. So some of the 10,000 different couplers we have, we might be able to get some of that returned. And uh, that would be awesome, to be honest with you. The merry-go-round is completed. I'm scheduled looking, watching the weather. And when weather permits, we will announce it and have a big shindig up at the park and reveal the new merry-go-rounds, or the freshly rebuilt, I should say. That's it. Wow. And I have to tell you, it looks really good. Painted it, new bearings, and who who even knows how long it's been there? It's a it's tradition. It's about 60 years. It'll be faster years. than ever. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's only as fast as a person can push it. It'll be one of, it'll be one of the last ones out there. So it's. Yes. So. There's not very many of those around anymore. Do South Pole still have there? I don't. <laughs> 
That's going to be fun. Okay, so uh, we'll listen now to uh, Bruce Schumann's uh, stuff. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, members of the Council. So 2019 kicked off pretty uh, with a bang for us. Um, literally within the first few hours of the, of the New Year, New Year's Eve, we were uh, involved in a, a pretty massive brawl up in Roslyn. Um, the street was, was packed with a lot of brawlers, and that resulted in three individuals being arrested on felony assault. So that was kind of a busy night for us. And then since then, within the last three weeks, we've had some uh, uh, several higher end type cases that we've been, been working on, kind of keeping us busy. So uh, you know, hope this is not a, a sign of things to come for 2019. Um, Councilman Harper, just uh, since you talked about the 911, I just kind of want to tell you how we responded to that. We did have two officers working, so because the local phone systems continue to work, we kept one officer in the office, and then we had another officer, and his his or her sole purpose was to just stay visible, with the thought that you know, maybe somebody needed to be flagged down or something like that. So, so that's how we addressed that uh, that situation. Unfortunately, we didn't have any events. Lucy attends so many meetings, she, uh, she failed to mention this one, but if you recall several months ago, there was some strong discussion and consideration about shutting down your upper peels, your west sides, your, your, those type of roads on three-day weekends because the citizens up there are not happy with the excessive traffic up there. And so it's been the position of the city that if that was to occur, occur up there, then it would kick all that traffic down into Cleolum. And we have already have obvious issues on 1st Street and 2nd Street. And so the concern would be that it would just create an exponential traffic impact for us. So um, Lucy and I have been attending these, uh, these uh, traffic task force meetings down at the senior center about once, once a month. So a lot of work still ahead, a lot of different opinions on this. So, But they look, they look like they're, the county is going to do some modeling and not just make some quick decisions that could impact us. They're going to use the data to show what the impacts would be before deciding. So that's Thanks to Lucy's recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very lastly, maybe, uh, you know, maybe you've already seen this, uh, unfortunately, on social media. So last Friday, uh, around 9.30 p.m., night similar to tonight, minus uh, freezing rain that was a uh, that was occurring on that day. Uh, Officer Flick was proceeding up 903 in our Ford Explorer. He had just passed the police department. He had just passed Denny. He was heading that way. Um, at that same moment, a passenger car was coming from the other direction. Didn't necessarily appear to be exceeding at a, or proceeding at a, an excessive speed. The vehicle, for some unknown reason, lost control, spun sideways entered into the officer's lane and impacted the officer's vehicle, as you can see on the side door. Um, fortunately, there was both vehicles had, uh, had uh, airbag deployments. Our officer was able to uh, extricate himself from the car, make dispatch aware. Unfortunately, the passenger and the other car was entrapped, um, so the fire department was called and he had to be cut out of the car. A uh, gentleman was, was uh, was hurt enough that he was transported to Harborview, and most of what we know right now is in reported being stable, uh, stable condition. So um, you can see from the conditions of the vehicle, it's a pretty serious incident. But, uh, sent our officer to the hospital just for a just for a precautionary evaluation, but he he was able to come to work the next day, so he's doing okay. So the, the driver was not in here. <laughs> No, at this point, uh, what I failed to mention is we don't investigate our own incidents. So we brought in the sheriff's department. They have an accident reconstructionist. They came in. Um, alcohol is not to be not to leave to be involved. No excessive speeds. It was just a really bad night. So we're still waiting on a report from the sheriff's department. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now we'll hear from our fire chief. Honorable Mayor, City Council, uh, really didn't have anything to report on, but due to Scott bringing up the uh, 911 incident, uh, I did get a page on my phone, uh, woke me up in the middle of the night saying that the system was down. Um, it also informed me that uh, the station phone would be accessible, um, and it was advising people to call the station. So I went over and manned the station for a couple hours and then went home. So. We didn't have anybody call, we didn't have any calls, um, so 
the, the system, the, the backup system were put into effect and those seem to work. So uh, just here to answer any questions if you got any. Okay. Thanks, thank you. Citizen comments on non-agenda items. Anyone out here? Anyone? Uh, <laughs> clamoring to talk to the council? <laughs> oh, okay, well, you get your chance. So then, uh, under public appearance, of course, Amy uh, is, won't be here. Uh, there's no public hearings, no finishes. So we're down to new business. And this is uh, resolution 2019-001. Hazardous mitigation grant application. Yes. So we'll hand that over to our planner, Lucy. Okay, thank you. Um, so in 2015, the county, on our behalf, submitted a grant to essentially to FEMA. It was um, through the Depart Washington Department of the Military, and they. The grant was for um, bank stabilization measures along Hanson Ponds, the, the stretch of Yakima River that, that is visible when you go to the Hanson Ponds Park. And um, that bank is eroding at a pretty steady rate. And um, at that point, the hazard mitigation plan at the county was um, expired. And so our application has been hanging out there ever since. And now that the county's um, hazard mitigation plan is nearly final, and we do have a, um, a formal annexation in that plan, and the required um, regular and consistent um, participation by city staff, um, we're, we're now eligible for that money again. And the... Is this what Rob handed you in the first day? No. No, no. <laughs> no. Um, but this is something. Second, this has been hanging over the city. So this has been long, sitting out there time. since 2015, and um, I started 2016. So, um, but the basically the, the 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 plan is now becoming final, and or has become final, and the Department of Military representative has actually said that he wants to um, promote this project on his project list, which is really great for us, and we've been kind of plugging along for. Um, the last year or so kind of updating them and asking them a bunch of questions. So now they're ready to actually be the advocate for this. The grant request is for $300,000 um, to put in some engineered log jams all along that, um, that eddy, the bank of that eddy that's kind of um, causing the erosion issues. And also the grant includes footings and abutments for a new bridge. So, um, and riprap and all of that. So um, I um, asked for the help of Christina Woolman, who is formerly with the county, who is the person who actually applied for this um, originally, and she's now with Pertit. So she's helping us with the application. <coughs> and all of this, is, I, I'm, I'm explaining it to you so you kind of know what, what we're going for, but all this is is just to ask that um, myself and Rob can be the applicant's agents so that through the application process, we can handle that and we don't have to have... Um, legislative action or council approval to get the application in. So that's all with all that this resolution um, asks for. Any questions? Pretty complicated, what do you think? <laughs> we to approve. Second. Okay. Move to second it to um, accept or uh, authorize the mayor to sign resolution 2019-001. Questions? All those in favor of aye? Aye. Opposed? Okay. We'll keep you updated. Okay. Now we have uh, the next one is 2017-07. Uh, and this is uh, uh, between, uh, well, let, well, who's going to handle this? Me. You. Who's, who's okay. This? So this is what? Well, the task order is 2017 because I believe that the task order is for the comprehensive plan, which we, it's still the 2017 comprehensive plan task order, and that they just were amending that task order um, to include the land use element. And um, I just need more, uh, more assistance from the engineers to complete the comprehensive plan update. Uh, the amount of work it is just to review and manage the consultants who are who are doing the comp plan update 
is um, quite a lot. And um, the land use element is what ties it all together. My thoughts were rather than duplicate a whole bunch of effort, make it take longer than it really should, to tie all of those parts together, the person who wrote all those parts would be the best one to tie it all together with my under my direction and review. And um, we did build in um, this fund, the, these funds into the 2019 budget for planning. So this is just a request for approval to use the money that's in the budget. I make a motion to approve task order number 2017 07, uh, which is an addendum to the HLA engineering uh, agreement task order, in the amount of $15,900, going hourly. Mm -hmm. That's my motion. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded to approve task order. Uh, 2017-07, uh, a general agreement between City of Cologne and HLA uh, for the comp plan. Questions? <coughs> There's no questions. All in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That's passed. That's on that. So now under C, uh, we have a proposal from uh, Time Saves Orders PC, and I'll hand it over to. Uh, and I, I think um, I think that actually, you, this is the reason why he's going to make this presentation. Rob should explain a little bit that um, uh, about why we want this. Right. So um, we, we used to have a volunteer uh, do all our a lot of our IT work and. And so now he's moved on to uh, other jobs, and uh, I need uh, some help with IT work. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's it takes a lot of times, you know, not all the time, but just when I need it, it you know, somebody just needs to be there, ready to go. Um, and so I've asked Stephen to kind of uh, step in uh, periodically, and I think we need to make it more. <coughs> That's what this is. So, spend some time researching my relationship with the city just to make sure that I was even able to legally volunteer services to the city, because um, even that could come into question. I am able to legally volunteer services uh, to the city um, in other veins besides my elected capacity. Give you a little bit of background: uh, is before I was an elected official in the city of Cleon. I did contract work with our police department, going through their background check, fingerprints, training, etc., to be able to access the <coughs> systems and to be able to be allowed to uh, work on an as-needed basis. It's been sparse. Uh, they really, they're able to do most of their work, uh, but I was there in emergency situations if they needed that. Uh, also, the same with other departments within the city of Cleon. Um, I've offered, uh, my company has been contracted, I should say, to um, to do different computer work uh, where it was necessary. Again, it was never a, a continual basis thing. It was just an at-will call, which uh, doesn't require a contract. People just call us up and we do work all over the city. Um, the reason why I'm looking to uh, propose general service agreement is just so there's no ambiguity as to the terms. Uh, the city has always dealt fair, paid the bills. I believe I always provided a good service to the city. Um, but as uh, the amount of work may change, Having something memorialized would certainly be in keeping with the revised Code of Washington 42.23. Um, three things I'll highlight quickly. Point number six on, uh, of that says the letting of any contract in which the total amount received under the contract or contracts by the municipal officer or the municipal officer's business uh, does not exceed $1,500 in any given month. That's one of the con that's one of the state's caps whereby. Uh, an elected official can either their company or themselves can be employed by a city uh, in a capacity other than their elected capacity. Also under um, page two, the municipality shall maintain a list of all contracts that are awarded under this subsection. The list must be made available for public inspection and copying. So again, if I was to work without a contract, uh, though I am a licensed business, so I do, would, would still all be legal. 
uh, it'd just be suspect because people would say, who who provides your services? Oh, they just do it under, they don't do it under contract? Oh, it's one of your councilmen? It just doesn't look right. And so in order to try to make things look correct um, is another reason why the general service agreement. And then uh, lastly, I'll be recusing myself because a municipal officer may not vote in the authorization, approval, or ratification of a contract which he or she is beneficially interested, uh, even though one of the exceptions allowing the awarding of such a contract applies. Uh, the, in the interest of the municipal officer must be disclosed in the uh, to the governing body of the municipality <coughs> in the official minutes or similar records of the municipality before the formation of the contract. That word formation literally means both parties sign. So it's just simply writing up a contract does not uh, fly in the face of the statute. Um, but before it is formed or formalized, um, it needs to uh, it can obviously, I can talk to it. And with that, uh, I will be reducing myself and leaving the room for your deliberation. The only last thing I'll say is um, I don't need an answer today, but it was in the city's interest that I brought it today as they have some <coughs> matters um, in the absence of, of their return. Thank you. Okay. And, that's, and I, I want to add, go ahead. Will, do you want to ask him a question? Yeah, yeah I can, I'm not voting, so I, I can answer you. go out there, when you come back, grab what's in my box and bring it to me, if you could. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is there, there, any, is there any other question by council? Yeah. So, oh, the coffee no. is... <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd I, I like to add to that a little bit. Uh, when, and, you know, Devin really did do a lot of work with the city of Rudd, up the water plant, all the, over the library, all the place. And, most, and it really was very helpful for Rob, and it was my suggestion that we get hire someone for some additional help, and that's why we came up with this contract. Um, I know for a fact that he, he is the backup and does the computer work for a number of businesses in town, and, uh, and so if we do it this way, everybody knows what's going on. But go ahead, whatever, you know, what, what do you think, you know? Uh, um, will, be, will he be the sole provider of providing IT for the city plan? Does this contract set him up as a sole provider? Oh, no. It did not, I, I can hire other people if I want. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> and also, sure. it's with his company, and he has another person who works there who would also be doing whatever computer stuff needs to be done. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, right. Since I used to work for the government, we used to have to go out for kind of like a bid of people who would be interested in doing services for the city instead of, and <coughs> is there any obligation for the city to do that? It, it needs to be, a, this is just like an hourly type thing, and so I guess if it was going to be a, a, a big, I, I don't know the threshold, but we're, we're under the threshold. Yeah. Okay. And also it's just I as know. needed, there hasn't been anything, <coughs> it just, you know, in case, Rob can't handle something where he's busy, as, as an example, library. But go ahead. I'm, I'm bad luck. Pardon? Okay. Well, I mean, you guys, it's your discussion. I think, I think it just clears some stuff up, put some uh, transparent, yeah. put something out there where everybody can see it, and look, but, so it's not like we're hiding it, mm -hmm. yes. or it's being sneaked right. into, and yes. I, I think we ought to do that. Yeah? yeah. Well, I've. I've relied on he and Rick Coleman uh, for my computers for years and years. And go over the time. So, do you want to make a motion to accept this? Or do you want to discuss it further? I'll motion to accept it. Okay, motion to accept the general service agreement between the uh, Times Theater of DC. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded to, uh, uh, to accept this uh, general service agreement with uh, Time Savers PC. Questions? I, I, would yeah. rather, I would rather have something available there than tell them we can't have somebody available there. Yes. You know, and, and yes. This, this just opened that up. And, and yeah. We, yeah. It's above board. You know, that's like saying, go down and pick up a hamburger, but don't drive on First Street. <laughs> you know, it's about what I'm saying, if we don't do it this way and get, yeah. get it straight out. It's like, get our computers fixed, but don't use that computer. It doesn't make sense. Any other questions? If not, all in favor with aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we'll enter into the subject. All right.
Remind him to bring in the box. Bring in the box. Bring the box. Bring the box. Go ahead. <coughs> So, Stephen, the uh, agreement is accepted. Thank you. Okay, um, we're down to committee reports. And we'll hear from you. Uh, I have something for a committee report. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you just brought it to me. <laughs> uh, ut utility committee. Um, and I think two of the three members are not here, so I'm kind of speaking for them. We did by email. Uh -huh. But we got a request from a, uh, a customer <coughs> that had a uh, water pressure collapsed. She called the city, talked to Audrey, and <coughs> there was a malfunction in, in the meter reading. So Audrey couldn't see it. But right away, Bubba went out and there was a problem and the customer got on it as fast as she could got it fixed uh, so the overage uh, calculated by uh, Audrey <coughs> including tax is $156.51 and we agreed that this was legitimate that there was not a chance to know it ahead of time. It was between the meter and the house and the customer couldn't have responded any faster. So the committee is recommending that we apply a credit for $156.51 to this customer. So carried. Moved. Say moved. Yes. Um, is there a second? I'll second. second. Okay. Questions on this motion? Not all in favor with aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that one's accepted, and that's it. That's it. Okay. Motion Any other committee? A, no. A motion to adjourn. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> yes. Motion second. Oh, second. Second. <laughs> second. It is adjourned. <laughs>